You used to dress like this, or like this, or maybe even sometimes like this, but now you dress like this, and this. The psychology of fashion trends is so interesting to me. I understand that as we grow, our societies and our personal interests change, and so do our buying habits. Generationally, baby boomers in their youth compared to millennials and Gen Z in our youth dress totally different. But one of the more interesting questions that I've asked myself over the last couple of weeks is why do we demonize past trends? Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Drew What It Do. Thank you for tuning in to today's video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be answering the question why we demonize particular fashion trends. Let's get this video to 800 likes within the first 24 hours. That would mean a ton for me and for this video. I'd appreciate your support. One of the great things about growing up and coming into your own is the development of your own personal style, hopefully. <laughs> but I think one of the obvious reasons why we demonize trends is because our past self doesn't represent who we are today and the clothing and the ideas we used to formulate for our past selves, whether they be past trends, past ideas, past whatever, they no longer resonate with the individual we are today. So we reject that part of ourself within our identity. And I just realized my light isn't on and I always do this. Let's get that thing on, set the, set the vibe. Fall vibes, you feel me? <laughs> Fall vibes, you feel me? <laughs> All of us have outfits from our adolescence that make you kind of scratch your head. Whether you were dressing yourself or someone dressed you or someone recommended to you or you were in a friend group that dressed a certain way, we all kind of look back and cringe a little bit about our younger selves. And if you don't, you're a rare breed. <laughs> so I think this is an obvious reason why we demonize some of those past fashion moments. I think another reason and another obvious reason why we demonize past fashion moments are things or signature clothing details that emphasize particular features of society that are just wrong or insignary or just represent the wrong thing. Things such as sagging potentially, balloon trousers which was something that wasn't even that long ago, or any hateful insignia on clothing that's meant to represent some sort of hate speech or, or something of that nature. Now all of those reasons I feel are obvious to why we demonize particular particular trends. If you have any other ideas, write them down in the comment section. I'm curious to know what you think, but we have a lot more to go over in this video. Let me explain to you guys the other syndrome. So I saw a meme today. Well, actually I was tagged in a meme today in reference to being a hype beast and liking M.A. Leon Dor and or Arc'teryx jackets. And this meme, it did make me, it did make me chuckle <laughs> a little bit. Um, and if you haven't seen my video in relation to "Am I a hype beast?", I'll have a little card on the screen right now. Definitely worth checking out. I feel like it explains kind of my idea and opinions on hype beast culture. But what this meme made me think about is this idea that I'm coining called the other syndrome. Basically, the idea of the other syndrome is in order to be fashion forward, in order to be a person who's considered fashionable and not like the masses, you have to distinguish yourself from the masses and attract or wear things that are considered the other. And hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't yet stick with me, I have a pretty cool analogy. I feel like that'll explain it. The paradox of demonizing trends is a really interesting one. The idea that you criticizing or you making fun of or you trying to enlighten individuals within a particular group to reach or venture out into other styles, whether that style be avant-garde, military wear, tech wear, or other forms of street wear, you're basically inviting the people that you're criticizing, whether it be for the fact that they aren't thinking thinking freely or they aren't creative enough or they aren't individualistic enough with their style to then now try to become a, a type of spawn of avant-garde or tech wear or whatever. And the paradox is, is that once these individuals begin start taking interest in avant-garde or whatever it may be, I'm just using avant-garde as, as an example, once they begin taking interest in that style, then that style irrevocably becomes changed and you begin to start looking at your passion for avant-garde differently because of the fact that X, Y, and Z individual is now wearing avant-garde and maybe wearing it in a new way or wearing it in a, a nuanced way. And it's really interesting. Hopefully that distinction makes sense. I know it can be a little bit confusing. Let me try to use this analogy to paint the picture a little bit better. I'm gonna read off of my notes because memorizing the analogy would be 
a lot. <laughs> so, Group A likes M.A. Leon Dor, and Group B likes Archive Fashion. Group B constantly demonizes and or criticizes Group A for a lack of personal style and or lack of originality. Members from Group A contemplate this idea, and members from Group A begin to find interest in what Group B enjoys, Archive Fashion. Group B then begins to complain once again about how Archive Fashion used to be about this and this and how the, the glory days of Archive Fashion weren't about all these kids who liked ALD now joining the archive fashion cult or sect of fashion. And then they start to demonize the quote unquote new version of archive fashion because of the influence of group A, thus creating a cycle. Everyone wants to be the other and the this idea of being the other is called the other syndrome. And M.A. Leondor and archive fashion is an example. It could be something like sustainable fashion and vintage and uh, military wear, whatever. It could be literally any type of version of fashion. Everyone wants to be a part of the other, right? No one wants to just be the most trendy person in the room. They want to maybe have some trendy pieces, but maybe not at all. And then they really want to distinguish themselves as someone who's fashion forward by being the other correct and i think the idea of standing out from your peers and distinguishing yourself is something that's very organic and feels very natural for people who enjoy and indulge in fashion fits and, and clothing and garments are meant to display a part of ourselves and we all want to feel like we're unique individuals within earth on earth you know what i mean so that distinction is is very natural for fashion but i think the difference is you can have that distinction and this is where my opinion comes into play. So you can have that distinction, but obviously the demonization of other people's personal distinctions is a little bit tougher to stomach because it's what someone enjoys. It's what, it's what represents them. And maybe if it's inauthentic, then that's a personal dilemma. It's not your responsibility to tell them it's inauthentic. It's your maybe your responsibility to question that authenticity. I think I'm going down a rabbit hole here. <laughs> anyway, I think the other syndrome is just one of the major distinctions that I can point to as to why individuals seem to demonize trends or demonize types of style. What do you think? I think that um, this idea of the other syndrome is something that maybe could be developed more, but I'm curious to know, literally, I'm curious to know what you think. Whenever we talk about trends, I always seem to bring up this three-headed dragon streetwear, sneakers, and social media. They all start with an S, and they have played a huge role into what a lot of people understand as fashion today, especially young people. Man, the world was just so much simpler back in 2005, wasn't it? Just in my 24 youthful years, we've seen pretty much everything under the sun go from cool to meh or from as cool as it possibly can be the hottest thing on the earth to oh, that's all right. And some examples include cactus plant flea market, certain Jordan models, Virgil Abloh, Supreme, Vetmont, Kith, and, and so, so much more has fluctuated in popularity and coolness over the years. And what I mean by meh or less popular is that it just doesn't captivate us in the same way as it did when maybe it was at its peak popularity. The advent of social media, sneaker culture, and streetwear always have us looking for what's next and then have us looking for what's next after that and to be even more clear not everyone demonizes trends and not everyone loves to move on to what's next and that process doesn't repeat for everyone it only applies to who it applies to but what i'm getting at in this point of this section of the video is that i believe that the fast-paced nature of social media and the attention economy sneaker culture and streetwear have led to a lot of people demonizing different parts of these categories and or different parts of other categories because of the nature of how fast things move one week a shoe is hot and the next week a shoe is even hotter or we want the shoe to be even hotter or there's a collaboration that we want and a collaboration we don't want 
these things all lead to the demonization or the criticism of particular shoe sneakers in a particular marketplace or for a particular genre. That's a whole lot of particulars. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think social media has played in sneaker culture and streetwear culture have played a relatively substantial role in the kind of fast paced nature of trends and maybe even fast fashion could be looped into that, the fast paced nature of trends and the demonization of certain trends? I'm curious to know what your thoughts are for real comment them down in the comment section i think the last thing i want to talk about is boredom and i feel like boredom ties into the previous category because we do seem to have individuals and not just individuals all of us get bored at some point right we get tired of seeing the same jacket the same pair of shoes the same sweater and we want to see something new and as a result because we want to see something new we demonize or we criticize or we look at in a different light past trends or previous trends from the last six months a year two years in a different we just look at them in a different light we look at them as worse or not as valuable and what's interesting give it enough time and the things that we get bored about in 2021, just like kind of the things that have, we've gotten bored about maybe in the 80s, 90s, or 70s, now are all coming back in the 2020s. And maybe in the 2030s, we'll be bored and we'll look back at the 2020s and we'll say, well, we want that 2020s feel, but with a little twist on the 2030s. And it's a, it's a really interesting cycle, I feel like, that happens where as things become popular, as movements happen within fashion there's a very strong outcry for oh this is so great we love this and then as time goes on they begin to dismantle they begin to dissolve a little bit and we criticize and demonize those trends and we move on to something else fatigue and boredom for particular items happens i would say within a matter of a year or two and depending on what it is, if it's a pretty large brand or collaborator or designer, typically they have moments in time and then their moment passes and maybe it comes back. We tend to get pretty bored and fatigued relatively often. <laughs> now the ball is on your park or the ball is in your park. What do you think? Why do we demonize trends, particular trends? Why do certain people demonize particular trends? I'm curious to know your thoughts. Are some folks just haters or do people genuinely get tired or bored of seeing certain items over and over and over again, get attention that maybe other items should get? I think that plays a role in it as well. Some items don't get the shine that they deserve while others do get the design. The, do get the uh, shine that they deserve. So do get the shine that they don't deserve. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2021. So that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll see you next time. Abianto. Uh, what's good post vid vid thank you guys for staying to this point the one percent the, the literally the point zero zero one percent that stayed to this point appreciate you so much here's a fist bump one time for the one time bop appreciate you guys and um yeah it, this was a fun video to make i'm not sure how well it'll end up doing um if it does really well then i'll be happy if it doesn't do very well hopefully you guys are intellectually stimulated by it and I, I always enjoy making these videos for you guys. So I'm going to be cranking them out all fall, winter, all holiday season. So what are your plans for Halloween? Like, what are you going to dress up as? Do you have any ideas? I picked up this like relatively ugly sweater for Halloween that says Halloween on it. <laughs> but it's like a, I'll, I'll explain it later in a later video. But I'm, I'm excited about it for Halloween for myself. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. So but what are you guys going to do? Maybe you guys give me some ideas. I know uh, I'm going to go to a pumpkin patch relatively soon here and get some pumpkins, which is fun here in the States and Colorado. What are you going to do? I'm curious to know. And I also kind of want to make an announcement. I think it's relatively final unless there's a pretty big outcry with the post vid vidders. But I think the discord name is going to be the Drew What It Do crew. And I know that might be too much rhyming, but it was a suggestion given to me and I liked it and I'm going to roll with it. I'm going to run with it. So we'll see how it goes. The Drew Would It Do crew. And if you're part of the Drew Would It Do crew, 
unlimited fist bumps baby you feel me it's unlimited <laughs> anyways guys enjoy the rest of your day enjoy your thursday if you're watching this on thursday enjoy your weekend enjoy your week enjoy your life i'll see you guys next video peace